And Gus, do you have a chair? Okay. <clears throat> Right, so this is our very last Friday class online. Um, so a reminder that I'm teaching at the yoga space. I know we're still deep in the most latest variant of the pandemic, but um, if that ever appeals, I'm there on Tuesdays. Uh, the class that's most like this one is 2 to 3 p.m. on Tuesdays. Um, restorative classes on Tuesdays at 4.30. And you can always reach out to me for privates if you ever so desire. And then my announcement that's going out on February 1st is that I'm going to open all of my YouTube library to the public for free. So 200 plus classes will be there if you just want to continue with your home practice and have some guidance. Those will be there um, on demand. So you can always just pull me up. And uh, yeah, so there you go. My gift to you. So I appreciate all of you hanging with me through this. And um, <laughs> I love the little uh, monkey gallery here, whatever it's called, peanut gallery. Um, so we are gonna do restorative practice today. I know some of you don't come Mondays, but also Monday will be restorative for that very final class. And today we're gonna use uh, the chair quite a bit and the bolster. So if you have blankets, you'll just kind of roll them to make a bolster. All right, so we're gonna start just centering. And take a moment to come into your cross-legged position, finding as much balance as you can, left to right and front to back over the sitting bones. Just spend a little bit of time making some adjustments so that you feel tall. You feel like your spine is getting that signal to be a little bit more alert and erect. And then the skull is right above the spine. And we'll leave the hands on the legs, palms against the thighs, dropping the shoulders, closing the eyes, and looking away from the brain. Try to release your full weight down into the floor, into the props. Check in with your legs. And attempt to feel more surrendered in the legs especially in the hips, the inner thighs and groins, maybe even trying to sense the weight of your thigh bones. Drop the shoulders even more. Maybe imagine your elbows a bit heavier. Slacken your lower jaw. Relax your tongue inside of your mouth. And even letting the skin of the face descend from the hairline all the way to the chin. Pay attention to the abdomen. Breathing through any gripping or tension there, starting to soften the abdomen. Just simply attempting to align your awareness with real time through the portal of breath attention, sensing the inner body is another good way to drop into presence. Just a couple more moments here, maybe placing an intention for the practice, for your day, for yourself, for another. Begin to move the hands to the heart center, joining the palms a moment to broaden the chest and on an exhale bowing toward your heart release your hands lift your head and gently open your eyes and welcome so we're going to start with a half legs up the wall pose so um, we're going to use a chair and we're going to use 
a bolster and we're going to use a blanket. So those of you that don't have bolsters, we are going to imitate and kind of <clears throat> improvise with rolling one or two blankets to kind of create that uh, cylindrical shape. So if you do have a bolster, you can just, of course, use that. And if you're working with blankets, you can just kind of stack them and then roll them so you have kind of a the size of a bolster created. So we'll be using the bolster and an additional blanket for your head and shoulders. And then the chair will be supporting your lower legs. Who's that? I can't tell who just joined us. It's Megan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> All right. So we're going to lie down on the bolster the long way. You're going to have your head and shoulders completely down on the blanket that you've placed. And that's important. So we want to make sure the shoulders land, that they're not in limbo land, floating kind of above the floor. So they need to be grounded. You're going to place your legs on the chair seat, lower legs. And a lot of these restorative poses, you'll know when you have them right because you feel supported in a surrendered state. So if something's kind of agitating or bothering, um, you'll know you need to tweak something because the idea here is supported physical rest. So hopefully by now you've kind of arrived into the general shape and you're supported in the position of the chin and chest coming together. The chest is lifted and spread. The chin is tilted toward the little divot between the collarbones. The legs are elevated. Your knees are probably flopping open a little bit, which is fine. And I just want you to tune into your exhalation. And imagine the belly softening toward the pelvis, gently concave, relaxing toward the bolster underneath you. You might choose to close your eyes. So restorative practice is really less about stretching muscle. It's really about putting good pressure and good stress on organs. It's about supporting the health of the organs. And so here we're getting a really nice support to the brain, the heart, the lymph system in the body. So just trust that you don't have to exert any effort to receive a whole lot of benefit. See if you can drop into the natural cadence of your breath without getting in the way of it, just kind of observing the breath flow from a distance. keeping the attention on scanning the body and mitigating any unnecessary efforting going on in the body. Just keep softening into the pose. watching throughout the practice how the brain is really affected by the surrendered body. When we address our physical tension, it naturally supports the nervous system, supports 
the brain quieting down, supports the breath becoming a better version of itself. And for the last five exhalations, just see if you can really drop into them, track them to completion, empty the breath. Now, a reminder here that as we transition through some postures today, we're attempting to have a cumulative effect of quieting down. So as you transition, just remember, we're not trying to jar ourselves or upregulate again. So just kind of protecting the quiet that you're starting to cultivate. We're gonna to start to come out of the pose just by letting the legs come down first. And then give yourself some support as you roll off of that bolster, coming to one side. <clears throat> we can move the chair aside. We're going to keep working with the bolster. And we're going to incorporate a strap. So if you don't have a strap, it's okay. It's not completely necessary. But if you do have a strap, you can close the strap. You can make the loop. And we're gonna be taking bound angle pose. So it's a bigger loop that you will tighten up once you get it around your lower back and under your toes. And we'll kind of keep the setup pretty similar with the blanket and bolster. So a different version than we've done in the past, we're gonna elevate the lower half. A lot of times in the past, we've elevate, elevated the upper half. So you'll feel a little bit different this way. Very restorative, very quieting. So once you have your loop, you can drop it over your head down to your lower back. It should kind of rest along the hip line. And then just tucking the loop under the toes and you can tighten off any excess that you don't need. So some of us have longer bodies. And so we do want the feet elevated. So if you come back and your shoulders and head come under the blanket um, and your feet don't quite um, make it out of the bolster, put some blocks under your feet. Cause we want, we want the feet as high as everything else that we're sitting on the bolster. So, um, you'll have to see about it once you recline back. We're attempting to have the sacrum, the legs, the feet on the bolster. And of course, the shoulders and head, we want back down on that blanket because it puts us in that really nice broad chest position. The chin and chest coming together. And the arms are going to unfold in there. Shavasana position, so 45 degree arms, palms up. And if your hips are really reluctant here, you, you might tuck something under your knees or all the way up to the thighs so that you have support. You wanna feel your legs are passive and cradled. If they're not propped, you still wanna have that kind of releasing feeling in your legs. is a little bit more of a back bend than the legs up the wall pose that we just did. So you might just incorporate a little bit of effort to create more ease in the low back by taking your pelvis and just tipping it back. Another way to say that is to move your tailbone toward your feet or up toward the ceiling at the same time. Soften your cheeks, close your eyes. Unhinge your jaw. So this is a restorative practice, which means we're heading toward pranayama. 
towards the end of the practice. And so we're gonna become very aware of breathing throughout the practice. And as you hold the pose, just kind of envision the pathway of the breath, beginning at the pelvic floor, the lowest diaphragm and up to the soft palate at the roof of the mouth, the highest part of the diaphragm. Just envision that pathway. And the breath isn't linear, it's really full circumference. So as you breathe in, yes, it's riding up, but think about it filling out in all directions, full circumference breathing. And as you exhale, yes, it moves back down, but you also kind of empty that cylinder of breath. As you inhale, try to become aware of the abdomen not rising any higher than the lowest ribs. Keep your eyes pointed toward your cheeks. scanning for unnecessary gripping in the body and just kind of soften, melt those areas like butter, like warm butter. We're gonna to start to change the legs to release. So if you're able to just slip one foot out, that's probably the easiest way to come out. You might need to reach and loosen the belt to do that. But we're gonna just give the legs a counter position. Once your feet are free, step them onto the floor and just let the feet step out wider than your hips and the knees fall toward each other. I'm just feeling the release in the groins and the hips after that big stretch. And you're gonna ease yourself gently, carefully to one side to come off the height of the bolster. And feel free to move the strap aside. The bolster that you're working with can be a <clears throat> support for child's pose now. So we're gonna take the version where we rest one cheek. So begin by just stepping your knees wide, feet together, your hips as far back as they go. And then try to dip your chest and your cheek down nice and low and landing that first cheek, whichever one you choose, stepping the elbows wide to make the shoulders a bit more passive. So this should feel really welcome after a couple back bends that we just did. And go ahead and just turn and let your other cheek rest for about a half a minute.
we're going to start to gently press down through the hands to bring ourselves up. And we're going to come into a new pose requiring that bolster and the chair. The chair should have all four feet on your mat so we know it's not going to slide away. The seat of the chair will face you. Go ahead and place a block on the chair seat. And you're going to straddle your bolster. So this won't look like your traditional hero pose, although it's meant to kind of imitate the hero pose. You'll, of course, be straddling the bolster so your knees will be wide, your feet will be together, which is, of course, counter to the, the shape of the pose. But it, you'll feel it's very supported. And if you don't feel that, you're going to want to make it supported. You might need to tuck something under your butt, like a blanket or a block. So you want to feel like you can just sit down comfortably on that straddled bolster. So the chair, the purpose of the chair is going to be to support that dorsal spine across your shoulder blade line. So because we all have different chairs and different bodies, you're gonna to have to push your chair to whatever point it needs to go so that when you lean back, it hits you and supports you across the shoulder blade line. So I use my hands to the front leg so that I know my chair doesn't go away and hopefully the sticky mat is helping with that too. And then the arms are either going to go up to the back of the chair for support, or you could, I like to take my hands to my head and just sit back with a clasping hand position. You can also do opposite forearm grab. The block is there to keep you more supported. You can also use a blanket if you don't like the feeling of the block. You can also turn your block up a level if you want head support, if you want the block to support your head. But remember, this is kind of a, an imitation of reclining heroes. So we want to take the tailbone into the body. We want to lift and spread the chest, compact the front ribs a little bit inward and back. So it's a more restful version of Supta Virasana, reclining hero pose. You might start with the hands clasping behind the head and maybe graduate to elbow grabbing, which can be a little bit more um, opening in the armpits, can be more elongating in the sides of the trunk. But remember, this is restorative. So you're trying to keep the dial really low to a simmer as far as effort is concerned. One of the ways we work with organs and restorative practice is putting them in different uh, relationships with the gravity field. Just kind of visualize your body like it was see-through and just kind of notice how the organs would be floating around and positioned in space. Remember using imagery, using imagination is one way we can help ourselves really stay present. Keep the mind occupied, give it a bone. Keep moving the tailbone into the body toward the ceiling, elongate the lumbar spine. Soften your eyes. The back bends are really energizing, they're exciting. So just temper it by either closing your eyes or just letting the eyes rest at the backs of the sockets. Like they're resting on little pillows. You're going to stay about another half a minute. There's that big pathway for breath. The front body is wide open, full circumference breathing. Now, to come out of the pose, you want to be really conscientious here. So let your arms start to move down. You might use the legs of the chair for support. You're going to lead with your sternum, just like you'd come out of a more um, classical version of reclining hero. And once you're up, you can go ahead and shift off to a seated position. 
So we're going to sit on a blanket. We've done a series of back bends. So it's important that we just sprinkle in some twists to kind of keep things neutral so we're not getting very upregulated. So we're gonna sit with our feet off to the right. And you're gonna, you might elevate your left buttock with a blanket, you don't have to. Some people like to sit with a blanket across both sitting bones, so it's a personal preference about what feels um, supportive to you and what makes you feel more even in the pelvis. And then you're gonna place a block just directly behind you. And we're gonna move our right hand palm down against the left thigh, the left hand onto the block. Remember the block is close, as close as can be to your body. And it's as much height as you need so that you don't have to lean back or down. So you wanna keep your spine really upright. And then close your eyes, take the gaze out of the equation because the eyes tend to kind of drag us around and keep us a little bit more in the external world. So just kind of closing the eyes, visualize your spine. The spine is twisting, the rib cage is following and floating with the action of the spine. And just kind of try to sense when it's time to turn the right hand so you're on the back of the hand, taking the back of the hand against the thigh to help gently coax the right side ribs around. Clearing a little bit more area for the armpit, chest area. And after an exhalation, like you're being lifted through the top of the head, just lengthen out of the twist. And we'll transition to the other side. So your feet will be to the left of the left hip. You might prop the right buttock or crop across both sitting bones, up to you. The block is still directly behind you. And then the left hand moves to the right thigh, palm down to begin. Right hand onto the block. And blinking the eyes closed. Your twist will really come as a secondary action if you can drop into the weight of your legs, if you can anchor into your sitting bones, everything touching the floor. Just kind of acknowledge it, invite it to surrender even more deeply. Every time you exhale, there's a little bit of a gentle coaxing. Relax your jaw, soften your eyes, make sure the eyes are softly closed, pointed toward the cheeks. Waiting for that inner cue to flip the hand to the back of the hand. Encourage the left side ribs to come forward. A couple more exhales here. And you'll catch the next inhale and just let it lift you back to center out of the twist. Good. We're going to find our way up to standing. We're going to do three standing poses with the chair. You might enjoy a blanket over the chair seat so it's a little bit more. Soft. I'm going to tilt my camera here. So the chair version of downward dog. I'm going to grab the edge of the chair seat and just start to walk yourself back. Your feet should be hip distance apart. Your toes are in front of your heels. 
Your legs are gonna stay vertical. So you're not trying to angle the legs at all. The torso will be angled. So to know that your hips are above your heels, just kind of um, acknowledge the weight of the feet, balance the weight of the feet. You want it very even front to back. Get the pelvis forward, take your legs into the straightest position without forcing anything prematurely. Just try to work toward your straighter leg. The head releases down, so you just let the neck go. Your shoulders might be a little confused. So remind the shoulders to move toward the hips, which will help pull the sternum forward. Elongating the sides of the trunk. Elastic intercostal muscles here. <clears throat> If you feel like you might be falling into your front body, just kind of scooping the belly toward the back, just to meet the effects of gravity. So there's some effort here. So try to acknowledge where you don't need the effort, become quieter in those areas, more passive in those areas. Imagining your brain resting, floating inside the skull. We're going to start to tiptoe toward the chair, coming into the chair version of Uttanasana, standing forward bend. So some of us are going to be a little bit more flexible than the chair will allow. So you might, instead of the chair, take your head onto a block. Otherwise, you're going to take your head onto the edge of the chair seat. You might fold up your arms and place your head on your arms. So the legs stay pricked awake and alert and effortful. But you should maybe tap into a more surrendered state in the torso, in the skull, the neck, the arms, the shoulders. Let your legs do the heavy lifting here, cascading down through the trunk, through the skull. So if you kind of have moved beyond the chair <clears> that you're not quite at a block, you can do a capital letter T with two blocks. That's a nice kind of intermediary place and then support the top of the head. So some of us might need that. We're going to start to come up. Now grab your blanket. You're going to put it on like an apron, just kind of over your front body, starting at the abdomen, letting it fall down toward the thighs. Step your feet just a little wider than your hips. And then you're going to fold forward until the blanket kind of catches. You don't have to hold it anymore. And then your arms, you're just going to take your opposite elbows in your hands. And your head dangles. So you might have your knees a little bit more bent than the previous version of this pose. So even though we've added something to the center body, we're actually keeping a little space between our chest and our thighs. So it might feel nice to your back body, it might feel more supportive than the previous version. Just 
hanging for a few more breaths. Drop your hands. Engage your stomach muscles to come up to support your spine. Come all the way up. And now last, before we come down again, we're gonna use the chair for wide standing, head supported forward bend. So that means we want the chair seat as our head rest. So you'll take a wide stance behind that chair seat, toes pointed forward. And then you're gonna come down so that your head rests. And it might be your forehead, it might be that you're using your forearms, you might take the top of the head, it's really personal preference about what feels best. But make sure to kind of float your weight forward and back until you feel very balanced over your feet. So we don't wanna overdo weight bearing in the heels, which would send the hips too far back. We don't wanna overdo weight bearing in the toes, which means the hips are too far forward. So we wanna be really lined up well. It's gonna bring the ease to the pose that we need. And then of course, if you feel like your front body is exploding, your back body is collapsed, scoop the belly toward the back. So the effort that we need is necessary, but nothing more, nothing superfluous. Before we come out, just check in with your feet. Sometimes we bulldoze with small toes. So see if you can pick up the ball mounds of the feet, just kind of regrow the space between them. Make sure the toes are all separated as well as can be of a broad toe base. And now to come out, we're just gonna lift the head, bring the hands onto the chair. Just start to heel toe walk your feet in. Okay, so that was a lot of forward bending. We're gonna palate cleanse once again with a front body supported sphinx pose. So you can use the bolster or the gold blankets. And you're gonna come down onto your front side so that the Bolster kind of fits you right above the navel toward the chest, but so that your elbows can still sit down underneath your shoulders. So you might have to kind of jam it back a little bit, snuggle it back so that you have your elbows in line with your shoulders. Take the feet wider than the hips and press each foot down individually and lift the inner thighs, center the thighs beyond the kneecaps. Try to get your front thighs down really evenly. And then tilt the head forward so you really take away any crease in the neck, close the eyes. And let the buttocks start to really surrender. So you can lift your inner thighs, roll them across the backs of the thighs towards the outer thighs. Imagine the buttocks softening like melted butter. Try not to inhibit those inhalations. Instead, let your belly really push into the bolster and force the breath into the back body. Slacken your jaw. Imagine there's a little marionette The person that holds the marionette is above you and they have little strings attached to your inner thighs and they're just gently lifting those inner thighs up. You 
Just step the elbows forward, take your hands to prayer position, rest your thumbs against your forehead. And just take the last minute or so here, just a little bit more passive. Just receiving the pose, letting the pose work on you. You can give up nitpicking on the pose, just be here. You're going to start to move your hand, hands away from your forehead. Just extend your arms. <clears throat> you can roll to your side. And we're going to keep that bolster you're working with that was front body support, but you're going to add a blanket above it where your head and shoulders will be. <clears throat> we're going to come into our um, upward facing, western facing forward bend. So we're going to be putting the, we're going to sit down on this bolster <clears throat> and we're going to rock back so that the legs can come up. So hopefully your head and shoulders are meeting that blanket. And you'll send your arms up overhead on the floor, fingernails reaching out, your palms facing up. And so before we get into the full extended leg pose, I just want to point out if you tend to have or you have today tight hamstrings, you might really benefit from putting a blanket across your abdomen, kind of where the hip creases are. And it could be a folded blanket or it could be a rolled blanket. But this can really help support tight hamstrings in the pose. So you're not just suffering. That's not the point. So feel free to try that if you start to extend the legs and you just acknowledge that the hamstrings are really dominant, you might want to add that support of a blanket between your thighs and your abdomen. So we want to keep the chin tilted toward the chest. The eyes are softly closed. The fingernails extend up, but the shoulders anchor into the trunk. And your legs are straight, unless that's torture, and then you're gonna softly bend the knees. And just letting gravity continue to sink those legs toward the chest. Keeping a downward gaze with your eyes closed. And you're going to start to softly bend the knees. Step your feet down one at a time. Put your arms into more of a goal post position. So your elbows right outside the line of the shoulders. Palms are still up. And now extend your legs one at a time. And rest on the heels with your toes above your heels. Curl the tailbone up toward the ceiling. Roll your inner thighs down toward the floor. Chest and chin stay connected.
Now you're going to slowly bend your knees and roll to your side. <clears throat> so feel free to keep the blanket for your head. And just roll on to your right hip side with your knees bent, your legs stacked. Just like you're lying on your side in your bed. So the shoulders are stacked, the hips are stacked. Knees are stacked, feet are stacked. And then see if you can draw the knees just a little bit toward the shoulder line, even though they might wanna slide down. Just bring them up. And now you're gonna keep your legs where they are, but start to let your shoulders come evenly to the floor. So you're gonna bring the left shoulder to the floor. Left hand might move on to the side body. Right hand might move on to your top leg just to kind of secure those legs there. Maybe eventually unfolding the left arm out to the side, palm up. Maybe eventually rolling your head to look down the left arm side. And just sending an invitation to the left side body to elongate. Spreading some distance between the hip and the shoulder knee in the hip. Think about the flesh of the torso revolving from right to left. Your left side ribs starting to descend toward the floor. Notice the quality of your breathing here in this twist. Now let go of the top thigh if you're holding with your hand and draw your legs to the center of the mat so you're resting evenly on your hips. Just take a moment, spread yourself out, lengthen your body. And then when you're ready, you'll be rolling onto your left shoulder and left hip, stacking right hip and shoulder above that, pulling the legs closer toward the shoulder line. Feel free to use the left hand to the right top leg just to kind of secure the legs in place. And then begin to let the right arm and shoulder drape toward the floor. Hand to the side body or arm unfolded. Head might be looking straight up or maybe it's starting to roll off to the right. turning the chest to the right, keep turning the side ribs to the floor on the right, feeling the flesh of the torso moving from the left side body all the way to the right side body. So the connective tissue of the right hip starting to release some gripping tension starting to unglue itself. And start to release the hand from the top leg. Roll yourself back onto your even hips. Lengthen your body out. And it's here that you're going to start to address anything else that wants to move. And you're going to be setting up for Shavasana. We're going to do our pranayama in a Shavasana position. So we don't need um, pranayama supports because what we're doing today isn't actual um, pranayama. It's, it's more of a guided imagery. So you could put a bolster under your knees. You could put something under your head, like a blanket. You might want to cover up. If you're feeling cold, you might want to dim the lights or close the door if you have a noisy household.
And maybe you use eye support. If your eyes don't like to stay closed very long without a lot of effort, you might put your strap over your eyes or if you have an eye pillow or something like that or your sleeve of your sweatshirt works really well. So we'll begin to just settle into the position. If you wear glasses, make sure you remove them, put them somewhere safe. And settling into the floor. Begin to pay attention to your breath. Sometimes when we do this, it alters the breath. So you might have to remove yourself a little bit from the observation. Imagine you're watching someone else breathing. Give yourself a little distance from your breath, just observing as best you can your baseline natural breathing. We're going to be practicing something today called Samabriti, which is same frequency breathing. So as you're observing your natural breathing, Begin to notice if there's a discrepancy in length between the in-breath and the out-breath. And with this awareness of the ratio of your breathing, what you're going to attempt to do is make your inhale and exhale even with each other. So that could mean you extend one side of the breath. It could mean you shorten one side of the breath. Remembering that when we work with our breathing, what's most important is that we keep quieting the brain. So nothing you do should be agitating, stressful, striving. So find the best way to create an even inhale, exhale chain of breath. We're going to keep refining this evenness. So another thing you might notice when you breathe in, if there's kind of a surge and then a stretch of breath and then another surge, you're just going to really notice more granularly the length of the in-breath. And if there's any kind of surge or imbalance in that in-breath, just try to create an even experience of in-breath. And same with the out-breath. You might come in really strong and then it thins out and then it becomes bulging again. So just starting to refine the sides of the breath that we're already still keeping even. So an image here that I like to offer is think about your breath as a big swollen, steadily flowing river. This airflow gradually stretching and warming your lungs. Our attention on this singular act of refining the breath to evenness, to smoothness, to steadiness. Only altering the breath in a way that keeps the brain quiet, nothing more.
And so one final piece of this that you can kind of hone in on is filling the lungs evenly, left and right. Oftentimes we don't think about the backs of the lungs where 60% of lung tissue is in the back. Make sure the breath is expanding the side ribs and moving all the way up behind the sternum. deep abdomen passive to the lungs and the abdomen if there's ribs there's lungs so really thinking about the rib cage And you're gonna let this practice fall away now. So you're gonna come back to the breath breathing you. And you're gonna rest in whatever remains from the asana practice, the poses, the guided breath work. might notice the breath has been enhanced with the practice. You might notice the mind is a bit more still. From Mary Oliver's Devotions, a poem called Invitation. Oh, do you have time to linger for just a little while out of your busy and very important day for the goldfinches that have gathered in a field of thistles for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender their strong, blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously, not for your sake and not for mine, and not for the sake of winning, but for the sheer delight and gratitude. Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing. So as always, you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. If you want to start to transition out of the Shavasanas, start to invite some deeper breaths to flow and some small movements to trickle into your body. And slide the soles of the feet onto the floor. Fold your hands onto your chest or belly. And then gently easing to one side. Resting on your side. Take your hands to the floor and by pressing down, Bring yourself up. And once you're up, just sitting quietly for a moment, joining the hands together in front of the heart center. And just sit long enough to acknowledge the effects of this practice. 
And also to take a moment just to quietly give thanks, finding gratitude in your heart. Let's take a deep breath together through the nose and let it go. There's a place within me that I know to be divine. I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Right. Well, I thank you all for being here. If this is your last online class with me, I do hope to see you again down the road somewhere. So take good care, everyone. We'll talk soon. <laughs> Thanks, Marga.